Okay. So now in English, we're gonna start into a, a standing position into mountain pose. Enough sleeping and laying down every time. We're gonna start from standing and we're gonna find this foot lock. So we're gonna hold the mat with the feet. We're gonna leave that inner arch of the feet, finding this neutral pelvis. And then from here, we're gonna bring the palms on the sides of the lower part of the chest. So where we have the lower ribs, we're gonna bring thumb and index finger on the sides, just so that we can feel the movement of the chest. We will be focusing now on expanding the lower part of the rib cage. As you inhale, as you exhale, allow the palms to sink in. As you inhale, focus on expanding the lower part of the ribcage. As you exhale, allow the palms to sink in. Keep on breathing with your own pace. And breathing out, exhaling all the air, letting everything go. Focusing of the movement of your lower rib cage. Doesn't matter what is happening in the chest or belly, doesn't matter where you're breathing, so you should not think about this. Just focusing on the lower rib cage, on that movement. Might be a little bit awkward at the beginning. Soon, with a little bit of practice, the awareness for those muscles will come back. If you like, keep the eyes closed. In some yoga schools, this is called diaphragmic breath. In other yoga schools, diaphragmic breath is called uh, so the belly breath when you expand the belly forward. When we do this movement with the lower rib cage, we are allowing the diaphragm to expand also to the sides. Which will create some more space for the lungs to fill in with air, especially in the lower part of the lungs so that the air can go deeper into each alveol. Besides, this simple exercise will improve the mobility in the upper back, where the last ribs are connecting to the spine. When we are expanding, we are also improving the mobility of that part of the back of the spine. Few more moments here, few more last breaths.
with your own pace. Take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, you can release the arms. If there was, I don't know, a little bit of release of tension, you can uh, shake it out <laughs> a little bit only if you want to. So currently we are improving so much the flexibility in that part of the spine that you might even experience crack here. So like release in the tension just from breathing. We continue with now stretch for the diaphragm. <laughs> so the right arm will come over the head. We are keeping those feet active, holding the mat. We're going to keep those hips in the center and only the right side of the body will be stretched. The right arm is straight. Try to not lean with your hips to one side. Try to keep them in the center and focus now on the uh, middle part of the spine. So exactly where we have the lower ribs, where we have the, the diaphragm attached to them. This is also kind of a stretch for the diaphragm. You can also release the left arm down to the left shin bone, crawling, crawling, crawling. Right arm is reaching over the head. You can look up towards the fingertips, palm facing towards you. Both shoulders relaxed. Feet are active. Push with your right foot. Don't allow it to go too much to the left side. And just focus on this part where we're breathing. Now we are stretching here. And breathing. A few more breaths here. If you like, you can close your eyes. A bit more challenging. One more last inhalation, exhale and come into the center. We switch the side, left arm reaches over the head, palm facing you. Straight arm reaches to the right side, side bend. Both feet are active, pushing the mat. Right arm is sliding down to the right leg. Shoulders are relaxed. You can look up towards the left fingertips. Stretching the diaphragm, <laughs> so the middle part of the spine. This will be the focus. If you like, close your eyes. The feet are active. The arch of the feet is lifted. It's a strong feet. Work out for the foundation of the body. A few more moments here. Inhaling and slowly exhaling, releasing, coming to the center. Again, if there was a little bit of tension, shake it, check it. <laughs> also the feet, massage in the ankles, a little bit of circles anytime or wherever there is in the body something moving. We have a little bit more of breathing. We start a little bit slow, but we're gonna create that in a fire very soon. So we're gonna bring those palms down on the level of the navel approx and we're going to breathe abdominal so the belly comes forward and then focus on expanding the belly to the side and as you exhale the palms are sinking in belly goes in inhaling expanding the belly to the side focus on this expanding the belly to the side and in Out. 
example, it's actually quite similar with the previous one. But the focus is a little bit more below. But in general, it's also expanding the lower part of the chest. Finding your own pace, your own breath. Few more moments here. One more inhalation. And exhalation, release. We're gonna open the feet now, hip width apart for a modification of this Dadasana mountain pose. We're gonna interlace the fingers and push the palms forward and then over the head. And then from here, we're gonna come on our toes. So we're gonna lift the heels and we're gonna come into this modification of Dadasana. Lift the shoulder one time up and then drop them down away from the ears. Elbows are straight. Palms are facing the ceiling. So I'll just go down for a moment. Stay in here for a few moments. Maybe you notice as your arms are raised over the head. Maybe also your chest is also naturally lifted. So we have a little bit of stretch also in the front side of the body, in the abdominals. Now it's a bit more awkward to breathe abdominal if you want to try. It is still possible, but it's a bit different. If you want, you can try that. You can try to expand this the lower part of the ribcage and the lower part of your belly to the side. And this time without the palms. Few more moments here. Inhaling and exhaling, heels on the mat, slow release in the arms in front of you and palms facing you, releasing the fingers. If you want, you can open your fist and close or a little bit of circles with the wrist, a little bit of circles with the ankles. This is not as easy as it looks like, and maybe you also felt it. Now what we're gonna do next is the three pose and and maybe you notice that during the yoga practice, I'm telling you very often, belly in, belly in, chest up, and then this is what happened. And then you wonder, okay, now how am I gonna breathe abdominal? And uh, the answer is that this either is not gonna happen or it will be just natural breath. Uh, so let's come in the three pose because I don't wanna uh, make you bored. We're gonna come first left foot standing. Right hip open, hips are parallel with the mat, facing forward. And the right foot will come on the inner side of the left thigh, right thumb is holding it. 
find a new balance. Left foot is active. Find in your tree pose, palms in front of the chest, shoulders are relaxed. And now from this, we will focus on lifting the heart center a little bit. So lifting the chest, lengthening those abdominals, the navel is gently in. So in, in yoga, there is a thing called abdominal lock. So we have this feed lock. Then we also have abdominal walk, which is a very advanced practice. And um, it includes also holding the breath and the belly will go in and up and it's lifting the diaphragm. So we're not gonna do this, but uh, what we're gonna do is kind of similar. So the abdominals are toned. So the navel will be gently in. Those abdominals are still active, which means that we can still breathe and the belly can still move, but we're lifting the heart center, then the navel is gently in, we focus on lengthening the abdominals, then the lower part of the abdominal is also active. So it's also engaging the deep core. So this is what is it. Very good tree pose. You're finding the balance, even though I'm talking all the time. I should have for a few moments. Focus on your tree. Few more moments here. In your strong tree pose. Inhale and exhale and release in the palms, release in the legs. If you want, you can do a little bit of circles for the angles, for the feet, the hips, shoulders, twisting whatever your body needs, side bends, twist. Just to move out a little bit of energy. And whenever you're ready, we're gonna come to a tree pose on the other side so that the right foot is gonna be active. We are lifting the arch a little bit, so not too much, just a little bit so that those muscles here are supporting the arch. And the weight of the body is also on the muscles so not just on joints. Hips, you know, facing forward active, left hip open. And lift it up, lift the foot to the inner side of the thighs. Palms in front of the chest. We are focusing now on this kind of abdominal lock. So it's not the full abdominal lock, but it's similar. And it's often referred as abdominal lock in some of the yoga styles. I know it's kind of confusing because Different things are called in same way and same things are called in different way in yoga. So the heart center is lifted, so not too much. So we're not going in a big paint, just a little bit of lifting so that we engage the abdominals. Often in our daily life, we are in a rounded position. Then those abdominals are shortened. When we sit like this in front of the computer, which means there is not enough space 
for the internal organs, there might be something pressed or they just don't have space here for the blood circulation so that everything can happen properly. Besides, the abdominus will be weak. And this is very important part that is supporting our spine, protecting the internal organs. And now we want to focus on this, lengthening the abdominus, gently toning in and keeping the navel in. As you lift the heart center, as you lift the chest a little bit, then it's already happening this. You can still breathe, the belly can still be moving, but it's kind of engaged. Heart center is up, shoulders are relaxed. Beautiful stable tree pose. Keep on gazing at your chosen point. Inhale, last time in the posture, exhaling, releasing the palms, releasing the leg. If you need some, shake it, shake it. Some circles, simple joint movements, whatever you need. You are actually activating a lot of, a lot of muscle groups, improving the function of some important nerves and also generating prana energy according to the yoga philosophy. If you need also some circles for the ankles, for the feet. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna come into a chair pose. So the feet will be together, the knees and the thighs will be squeezing together. So when we squeeze the thighs together, we are engaging the pelvic floor. And what we could do, you can also squeeze yoga block or a book. If you wanna try this, just grab something. If you want to try, ah, very good, <laughs> very good. So <clears throat> yoga block, a yoga block is a bit uh, uh, bigger or a book. This is an option, you don't have to. So when we squeeze it, we're engaging so the deep core muscles so the pelvic floor. And this means that we have strong foundation for the, for the spine, but it's just an option. The feet will be active. And from here, we're gonna bend the knees, we're gonna keep the spine straight, the chest is lifted, raising the arms in front, the diagonal, we're gonna go into our chair pose, beautiful. And from here, I'm gonna hold the block. And from here, check your knees, if they're going too forward and you wanna keep them back, protecting the kneecaps. Then check if you're lengthening the abdominus. And if you are keeping the lower back neutral, so there shouldn't be too big arch there. Shoulders up and keep them down. Very good. Let's stay here for five more deep breaths. Approx because everyone breathes. Up with different uh, durations. So time measurement in yoga is very approximate thing. But five super deep and slow breaths. Mm -hmm. 
last time inhalation exhalation slowly release the arms coming to standing and you can also release the yoga block very good next thing is a twisted chair pose we're going to twist from the middle part of the back from the middle part of the spine and then we're going to open the chest to the right side first so the palms in front of the chest squeezing the knees squeezing the thighs as if there is a yoga block or a block and then first we're going to go down into a chair pose sitting on an invisible chair and then the left elbow will come on the outer side of the right thigh so left elbow right thigh once you're there push your palms opening the chest twisting keep on squeezing your knees thighs together see they're active shoulders are away from the ears Stay here for five deep breaths, approx. Focusing on the middle part of your back. Palms are pushing each other, activating the chest muscle, the pectoralis. Last time, inhaling, exhaling. With the next inhalation, come to standing. And release, shake it out. And then there's also pressure on the palms because we're pushing so hard, engaging the forearms. If you want, you can do the reversed namaste. The palms are pointing down, the back of the palm is touching together. Do like a counter pose for the palms. You know, this can be seen on the palm camera. So the back of the palm is pushing together. You can find here your angle. So if you want more angle, then you can go a little bit deeper. Yeah, it's quite funny. I'm gonna repeat on the other side, so chair pose. Twist the chair pose, Parivrita Utkatasana, or revolve chair pose. Palms are pushing together. We're gonna bend the knees, keep the knees back, hips down, belly in, chest up, shoulders down. Inhaling here, palms pushing each other, exhaling right elbow, left thigh. Palms are pushing each other, shoulders are away from the ears. The core is strong. Keep on squeezing your thighs as if there is a book. Few more moments here. Inhaling last time. Exhaling. With inhalation, you can release and come to standing. Check it out. Anything your body needs, so release if there was some tension when you hold the posture a little bit longer. Maybe you have some cramps here and there. Continue with triangle pose, trikonasana, wide leg, standing posture with three and a half feet apart, the toes will be left foot slightly in, 
right foot is going to point to the forward side of your mat or to the right side of your mat. And from here, let's try a modification. Let's bring the left hand behind the back and slide it, slide it, slide it as much as your shoulder will allow you. And then the right arm is reaching to the side and the right arm is gonna reach to the right. So we're gonna allow the body to go to the right side and down. The upper body is straight. The movement is from the hips. Right hip is down, left hip up. Right arm is reaching in front. So we can either keep it here, or if you don't like that one, you can just bring the right arm on your shin. You get to choose. Today for our Manipura Chakra for the fire element, when we do that modification and we're focusing also on creating this inner fire and engaging the deep core. So you get to choose. The belly is gently in, lengthen the abdominal support center is lifted. Feet are pushing the mat, the whole front foot is active and then you push into the outer back foot. Inhaling and exhaling. Almost there. Bend the right knee and with inhalation, slowly come to standing. And release, maybe a little bit of circles for the shoulders. And we switch the side. So the right toes will point slightly in. Then the left foot is going to point to the back side of the mat or to the left side of your mat. Hips are facing the right side of the mat. Right arm is reaching behind the back, sliding the right palm as much as it feels comfortable to open the right shoulder. Left arm is reaching to the side. You're gonna reach, go a little bit down from the hips. Left hip goes down, right hip goes up. And here we are not folding forward, so we're gonna keep the belly in. Lengthen the abdominal squared, center is lifted. Front foot is active. This is a very advanced posture. So this is a very challenging modification of the triangle pose. The triangle pose is already itself a very difficult posture. One of the foundation postures in yoga that we do so often. The good part is there are so many modifications. There is always to do something new and different. Same, same, but different. Almost there. Inhaling and exhaling. Bending the left knee with inhalation, coming to standing to the center, releasing the arms. Maybe you want to do a little bit of circles with the shoulders or with the head. If anywhere was tension, cramps or whatever, you can go out of the posture. One more time we do a right foot pointing the, the uh, front side of the mat or the right side of your mat according to your position in front of the camera. We do now the revolve triangle pose. So we have a little bit of twist from this position. For this position, we're gonna square the hips in direction right foot. And here you might need to adjust the position of the left foot. So for this, you're gonna need very flexy ankle and open hips. And if this is not possible, then you want to bring the left foot a little bit to the left. So there is space between the feet. Hips are facing the right foot. The navel is in. Heart center up, spreading the arms. Left arm is gonna reach front, right arm back. We are already twisting the body here. 
And you can also feel free to remain in that posture into this standing twist. With the right arm is gonna reach back, left arm front, twisting. This is option one. Option two, with control, strong core, we're gonna fold forward to this revolved triangle, Parivrita Trikunasana. If you're flexible, the right thumb will come on the outer side of the right foot. But this is quite challenging. So you can just bring the right palm, oh, I'm sorry, the left palm on the right shin. So without relaxing here, without putting the, the pressure on the knee, just the palm is there for support that you find the balance. If you're finding your balance, you can also look to the right. Strong core. Few more moments here. Very good shoulders are away from each other and away from the ears. No pressure on the neck. Last inhalation in the posture. Exhaling. Bend the right knee and with inhalation, come to standing. Come to the center again. If it was a bit too much for the shoulder or head, neck, feet, whatever, take your time. Holding the postures can be quite challenging. And of course, you know what comes next. Switching the side to the left foot will point the back side of your mat or the left side of the mat. Hips will follow that direction. Navel is gently in, heart center up. Hips are facing to the left foot. Spread in the arms, right arm is reaching front, left arm is reaching back. Both shoulders away from each other, both palms away from each other. Think about keeping them in one line, like if you're holding a stick. You can stay here, which is already very challenging posture. When the arms are spreading, the shoulders are spreading, going deeper into the twist. Right arm reaches front, left arm reaches back. Or you can go down for the reverse triangle pose. Right palm is gonna reach either the left shin bone or the outer side of the left foot. If you find your balance, you can look to the left. Shoulders are away from each other. Arms are in line, belly is in. Breathing. If possible, legs are straight. Front foot is active. Last inhalation in the posture. Exhaling. And bend the front knee with the next inhalation, come into standing position to the center. You can close the legs. And again, shoulder circles or anything. Because we are doing a lot of challenging postures. I don't know if we awake already a little bit of fire. Okay. <laughs> this makes me very happy. And now, so we are still in the center, feet are together, legs are together. And from here, we're gonna come into a kneeling position. Four, uh, 
a little bit of more stretches. And for the first one, we're gonna keep the toes on the mount. Try to spread the toes the way you spread your fingers and try to keep all of them on the mat. So not just the thumbs, but also the small toes. And then you can bring your hips on your heels. It's a few moments we stay here now. Stretching the toes and the feet in case of any pain in this position, then just don't force yourself. You can try this with a blanket underneath, rolled blanket underneath the ankles. And slowly walk your palms forward. Feet are flat on the mat. Tender the bold pose just for a few moments as a counter pose. We've been doing a lot of standing postures. So the feet deserve also a little bit of stretch. Kind of a gentle massage. A few more moments here. And from here, we're going to lift the hips. We're going to come into a kneeling position. And we're going to open the knees, hips width apart. Same rule, rules applies as we did in standing. So this means that we lift a little bit the holes. And the, then the navel is slightly in. We want to find this neutral pelvis. And we have one straight line from the knees to the head. And before going to more difficult things like back bends, now we're going to warm up the quadriceps. So the palms are on the sides of the body. If you want, you can also squeeze your thighs, just an option. And then I'm doing head, lean back, moving from the knee joint. The body, the upper body is in one line with your thighs. As you exhale, come forward. As inhale, lean back. As you exhale, come forward. And you can continue with your own pace, but try to do it slow. When it's slow, it's working. Otherwise, it is moving back and forward. It's a slow breath. Holding the breath for a moment, holding the posture for a moment. Exhaling all the air. Very good. There it is in a fire. A few more breaths here, so a few more movements. One more breath with your own pace. One more time, back and forward. This was already quite intense. So if you want, take a few more moments of resting into the Thunderbolt pose. And option to stretch those quadriceps is to walk the palms back behind the body. And from here to lift the pelvis a little bit and keep the belly in heart center away from the navel. So the tailbone is in 
We're switching the quadriceps. And releasing the hips on the heels. One more time, we're gonna come into a kneeling position. Knees are uh, hip width apart. We're gonna tuck the toes underneath this time for a camel pose with the toes uh, tucked. And now we're gonna come into a back bend. So we're gonna lift the heart center and lengthen as much as it's accessible. So without forcing the tailbone is in. The fingers will come on the back side of the hips. Pointing up, hips will come forward, bellies in, chest up. You can either keep the head on top or you can relax if there is no tension in the neck. Elbows are close, squeezing the elbows together. Squeezing the elbows together. If you want, if you're more flexible, or if you feel warm, you can try to reach one arm to the heel. So right palm, right heel, finger pointing down. And then switch in the side, the right palm goes back on the hips. Left palm on the left heel, fingers pointing down. Few moments here. And left fingers come back on the hips. If you want, you can go into the full camel pose. Right palm, left palm on the heels. And breathing. Most important is to breathe. If you're in the full camel pose, you're going to bring your palms on your hips, fingers pointing up. Slowly lifting the chest, lifting the head. Keep the feet flat on the mat and come into Vajrasana Thunderbolt pose for a few more moments here. And the child's pose. Walking the arms forward or keep them on the sides of the body to round the spine. So your own child's pose, your own modification, just to round a little bit the lower back. Counter pose for the Camille. With your next inhalation, begin to roll the spine vertebra by vertebra. Come into a seated position. And we are in the thunderbolt pose again. Now we're gonna bring the palms on both sides of the knees. So a little bit forward, not in front of the knees, but also not on the side. So just so that we can keep them on the mat. And the index fingers are parallel. We have now one more pose to engage a deep core. The fingers, uh, the index finger are parallel, shoulder width apart. And from here, we're gonna push with the palms. We're gonna push through the shoulders. We're gonna lift the knees and 
who has more power can lift one leg or both. I cannot do both, but if you can, you can do some. The shoulders are active, so you're pushing through the shoulders. Walasana pose, cold. This is for the deep core muscles. Very good. Engage the deep core, feel that burn. The spine is rounded here. Inhaling and exhaling, release the knees on the mat. Whew. Very good. That was the fire. <laughs> okay, we're gonna bring the hips on the right side. Extend the legs. Front for a boat pose. You can do either baby pose, palms underneath the knees, lifting the hip forward, the, the, the feet forward. You can also release the arms. You can also extend the legs. And breathing, whole center is lifted. Inhaling and exhaling, feet on the mat. Releasing the posture. Of course, if you want, you can stay longer. Reverse tabletop pose, palms behind the back, one elbow distance, feet are hip width apart. You wanna stretch the abdominals. Heels come forward and up. Belly in, heart center away from the navel, shoulders pushing. You can stay here or you can relax your head. Inhaling and exhaling, releasing the hips. Laying supine, hugging the knees. Now we're gonna engage the core for one more last time. So we're gonna lift the head. We're gonna engage the deep core, squeezing the knees, releasing the legs. So the arms are reaching up. One more moment here, strong core. Inhaling. As you exhale, release the head and the mouth. Release the legs, extend the legs one by one feet on both edges of the mat, palms facing the ceiling, and close your eyes. For Shavasana. You can bring your awareness to your solar plexus, so where the Manipura chakra is. And if you want, you can bring your right palm there, and the left palm will come on your belly underneath the nether. So our palms are a great source of energy. And this energy can balance certain parts of the body, energetical center, so we can give some energy to, to the solar plexus chakra, to Manipura, and to the sacral chakra, Svadishtana.
Observe your breath. Observe your heartbeat. Notice if your body is relaxed. Take one more inhalation, deep, slow inhalation. Exhale, let everything go. And with your next inhalation, begin to wake up your body, extending the arms over the head, bending the knees, twisting, stretching, whatever it feels right, or just doing nothing if it feels right. Waking up the body or just staying here for a few more moments, just being present. Keeping the eyes closed, if you like. And whenever you feel ready, you can rotate to your right side. Right arm is underneath the head as a pillow. Left palm in front of you for support. Pushing with the left palm, pushing with the right palm and finding your comfortable seated position with a straight spine and closed eyes. We'll finish with Three rounds of OM. Take a deep breath in so you can expand the belly forward to the sides. Lift the ribcage and fill the whole upper body with air. Exhale in OM. Inhaling for OM. OM. Last time, inhaling for OM. Eyes are closed, you can gently open them. Thank you for your practice. For your fire practice. So it can be slow evening.